So since there was a mistake in the video, for those of you looking at this at home, we talked about what it means to be a polynomial. We talked about how pizza is not a real And number. polynomials have positive whole number exponents, and they have real number coefficients. So the example here is a polynomial. So now, thank you guys, you're messing up my video. Now, now we're going to talk about classifying the polynomial based on the degree, okay? All right. All right, so a degree of zero. If you look, if my degree is zero, so my biggest exponent is zero, what does that, anything to the zero power is what? One. One. So I don't have a uh, variable, do you agree? I don't have an x. So this is just a constant. Y equals just some number, right? It, that's exactly right. It's a horizontal line when you graph it. Well, because a times x to the 0 is just a times 1, so you just have a plus b, which is just a number. So y equals 5. There's no real, right, right. Okay. So for example, y equals 2 or whatever. That would be a constant equation. It would be fine. Still a polynomial because it has one or more terms, right? All right. Um, let's look at the second one. This time I'm going to do a degree of 1. Okay. Now let me show you the equation because I think based on the equation you may be able to figure out what the name of it is. So my biggest exponent is 1. My degree is 1. That looks like something you know. Oh my God. So better step. What kind of equation is that? It's the equation of a line. It's linear. So this time, instead of a horizontal line, it looks like this. Wait, that's the same axis. It is. Mm -hmm. It looks like this, or it could look like that. What changes which way it goes? The slope. Look at my ax plus b. Which which one represents the slope? B is the y-intercept. X is the variable. A is the slope. If it was mx plus b, if it's mx plus b, it is the slope. What I wanted you to see is this first one, guys. This first one would be a positive slope. That second one would be a negative slope. So again, that A is coming up. Remember when we graph quadratics? If the A was positive, it opened up. If the A was negative, it opened down. A always controls the way it goes like that. Okay. All right. Next one. So A is the slope. A is the slope in that one, yes. This one should be one that is very familiar to you. Guys, I feel like I'm kind of fighting for attention from some of you. All right. It is a quadratic. That's exactly right. So we know that a quadratic looks like this if it's a positive A and like this if it's a negative A, right? It's a parabola. This is the first step in polynomial analysis is classifying it by its degree. All right, we're going to go up to four. So next is three. So this is what it looks like. Good guess. I'm getting bigger, right? It's a cubic. That's exactly right. It's a cubic. And y'all have been playing around with graphing a lot of cubics, I think, yesterday. And then the other day we graphed a few. Um, and so you probably know what it looks like. Depending on that A, and of course we know that with graphs we can shrink them and stretch them. They can be skinny and wide. And as this shrinks out and stretches out, you may not even, the humps may not be as visible in there, okay? They may start to stretch out and just, and sometimes they just look like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. Yeah, do that sometimes. All right, last one. Last one is a degree of four. Woo. 
Oh, this is getting big. Plus C X squared plus D X plus D. You know what that's called? You would think it would be quadratic, but it's not. <laughs> but it's quartic. Okay. So it is going to look like this. Now, of course, stretching, you may not see all the humps, but notice essentially from that parent graph or that, that first graph, I'm adding a hump every time I add a degree, right? If I went up another degree, then it would wrap back up this way. Okay. So, let me go back to that example that we started with. The computer's definitely thinking. That we said, yes, that's a polynomial. So if it's a polynomial, I should be able to classify it. So the first thing I want you to do is give it to me in standard form. What's it look like in standard form? Pi x squared. Yes. My pen stopped working. The one from the library. Okay. All right, so you said pi x squared plus 7x minus square root of 3. So let me ask you a couple things. First off, tell me what is the degree of this function? Okay. What is the leading coefficient? Pi. What is the constant? Ooh. Squ negative square root of 3. What is the type? Quadratic. Remember, type is based on your biggest exponent. So, when we get done, we'll have lots of steps that we use to analyze polynomials, okay? All four of those things we just talked about are four pieces of the analysis, okay? The type, the constant, the leading coefficient, and the degree. And so now I think that I will take the time before we graph to show you about end behavior. All right, y'all ready? This is what y'all said you were so confused about. It's really not bad. Is it a long A little bit. Like one um, you can probably put the chart on the back once we get started. I'm going to give you a chart, too. I'm going to talk about it, and then I'll give you a chart. All right, in behavior. Now, every graph that you have has two ends. Do you agree? I have this end and this end. Okay? And if you think in terms of... A coordinate plane with x and y. All right. To describe both ends, I'm going to use two mathematical sentences. Okay. And what this does is this tells you what the ends are doing without actually graphing it. So the first one I'm going to say, as x, and I'm going to use this little arrow. This little arrow means approaches. So the little arrow to the right means approaches. So as x approaches positive infinity. Now think about that for just a minute. Look at the graph and think about when as x approaches positive, positive infinity is really, really big, right? So as I go further to which way? The right. The right. right? If this is the x-axis and I'm going further and further that way, I'm talking about the right. So as x approaches positive infinity, so look at the right side of the graph. So look at my graph here. Tell me what y does. Does it get bigger or smaller? Look at the right end of the graph. It's pointing up, right? This is the right end. This is the left side, right? If I'm on a graph, this is the right, this is the left, right? On the right, this is just mathematical talk for saying on the right side of the graph, it goes 
up. They did. Well, it's saying the bigger X gets. So the further I get this way, then the bigger Y gets too because it's going up. So if I could go over to the right forever, 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 then I'd go way, way, way high. Look at the, the graph, the graph itself. Look at the ends of the graph. Look at, this, look at the second half. Because there's two ends. We said there's two ends. There's a right side and a left side, right? As X approaches negative infinity, okay? Which way does X get negative? Bigger negative. So this is the left side. Then the graph goes down, okay? It's easy to describe it given a graph. It'll get a little harder given just the equation, but I'll show you how to do it. Let's try one more given a graph, because if you understand what it is we're doing, it's easier to do the other part. Let's say... What is the type of this function? It's a cortic. It's a cortic. And I know that based on the shape of the graph. So when I describe in behavior, I have to subscribe two ends because it has two ends. It has a right side and a left side, and both of those must be described, okay? So the first one is as x approaches positive infinity, which really just means on the right side of the graph, it's going up. How do I say up? Y approaches positive infinity. And as X approaches negative infinity, which really just means on the left side, it goes up again. So X is left and right, Y is up and down. Does that make a little bit of sense to you? Okay. So we're going to generalize this based on the equation. Because the neat thing about graphs and in behaviors and polynomials is that there are only four scenarios, right? Do you see that? On the right side, it could go up or down, and on the left side, it could go up or down. So we're going to make a little chart to help you. We're going to classify these by their degree and their leading coefficient. If you just want to graph it each time and look and then state the end behavior based on that, you can. Um, if you're really good with the graphing. So I could have an even degree or an odd degree. Even degrees being my quadratic and my quartic and then a sixth degree, eighth degree, and so on. Odd degrees being linear, cubic, fifth degree, seventh degree, and so on. The leading coefficient could be positive or negative. And remember that's important because that leading coefficient tells it which way to flip, right? Positive or negative. So the neat thing about these is that every single polynomial in the whole world that is even degreed and has a negative leading coefficient has the exact same end behavior. No matter what goes on in the middle, the ends do the same thing. Okay? Same with odd and negative. All these scenarios, as long as they meet that criteria, it, it doesn't tell you what's happening in the middle, but at least you'll know which way the ends go. Okay? It's just a step in that analysis. All right, so if I can think of an easy example, then I can write the end behavior for this scenario and it'll fit the scenario for all polynomials like that. So can you think of an easy, even degree polynomial with a leading coefficient that's positive? A quadratic going up, right? 
this is, that's a pretty good easy example. And if I write it for that, it's also going to be true for every other even polynomial with a positive linear coefficient. So describe the end behavior of that parabola. As x approaches, uh huh. What does y do? Yep. How about the left side? Yes. Let's flip it around then. Let's look at even negative. The only difference now is my parabola is down. Hmm. What about the right side? As x approaches, uh huh, what does y do? Yes. How about left? Does it make a little bit of sense? Mm -hmm. Easiest odd degree you can think of. A linear, same. Linear with a positive leading coefficient would be a linear with a positive slope. Well, one's the smallest odd number I could think of. And a degree of one's a linear. That's pretty easy to work with. <laughs> Nah. The right side, what's it do? Mm -hmm. And the left side. This seems like a lot when you look at it. But once you figure out in behavior and you realize what you're doing and you realize that every single time everything's the same with one exception, all of this is the same every single time. The only thing you're doing is deciding does it go up or down on that side. All right, so now let's make so that. If both ends go down, they're both going to be negative. Yep. If it's like staggered, then the Options. first one is going to be. It depends. If it's a positive leading coefficient, then the, this one will go up and this one will go down. But it's negative. So think about a line with a positive slope versus a negative slope. So if, it's, if, it's, if the right side is going up and the left side is going up, then the fifth is going to be positive. Mm -hmm. So it's whatever's on the right side is, is the top. That's exactly right. From the left, and then you're still doing the right side first. Yeah, it doesn't matter which one you do first. That's just habit for me. I always do positive first. So on the right side, it's going which way? Well, if it is backwards, it's this time instead of going up and down, it goes down and up. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant, could you write the sentences in, in a different order? All right, so this was a lot of work to derive this chart. However, once we have derived this chart, we should be able to describe the end behavior of any polynomial in the whole wide world, even if it's a degree of 28, right? Because every single, even and negative, fits this end behavior. Every single even and positive fits that first behavior. It all, it flows. There's only four scenarios. Okay. And so cortic is a degree of four. Okay. And so that means it had a Okay, you're think right, right, even degree. Keep going. And it should have a positive Okay. And that's that means that um they go to the Mm-hmm. Yep. We're going to use the calculator to graph it. Yeah. Right now, I'm not worried. Like your test, let me see.
Let me just show you what it, what it looks like so you know. As you look at it, so you'll be given an equation, okay? What's the type, what's the leading coefficient, the constant, the degree, the y-intercept, and down here, what's the end behavior of the graph? This is the review. I will print it for you and give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the review folder instead of the test folder. Nice job. But um, it'll look just like that. This one's a little bit harder because it's not multiplied out. You'll have to multiply it out first. But... So, uh, let's, like, let's just look at one this uh, Let's look at number two here. Looking at this one, what's the type? It's a quartic. What's the leading coefficient? What's the constant? What's the degree? We haven't got the y-intercept yet. Remind me to show you that. And in behavior, where it crosses the y-axis. The y-intercept, I'll go ahead and tell you because that's easy. The y-intercept is always the number on the end of constant. The number without it. Did you say that? That is. Because, because, was that yesterday? Was that on the stuff yesterday? Um, if, if you, B is all, that's because if you find the y-intercept, that's where x equals zero. So if you plug a zero in for all the x's, Everything cancels except the constant because it doesn't have an x on it. Um, looking at this, how about the end behavior? Because I don't have a graph to look at right now. What's positive? As x approaches... How did you know that both ends went up? It's positive even. It's positive even. And every single positive even sits in that very first one. Right. Okay? Make sense so far? All right, let's take out your calculator and graph them. I'm going to walk you through it. All right, let's do, um, let's actually, well, I didn't write it down. I was going to do that same one that I just had up there. It's okay. Let's do f of x. Oh, no, it changed all my colors when I went. It's okay. Red's kind of hard to see. f of x equals negative x to the third plus x squared plus 3x Minus three, and just for the fun of it, what is the leading coefficient? Negative one. Negative one. What is the constant? Negative, Negative three. three. What's the type? It's a cubic. What's the y-intercept? Negative. Negative three. Am I leaving anything out so far? What's the end behavior? I'm thinking in my head, I always close my, my eyes and think, okay, odd line's the easiest. The negative line on the right goes down, on the left goes up. Because if you can think of one scenario that fits negative odd in your head and come up with that end behavior, you've got the end behavior for all of them. So in my head, I'm picturing a negative slope line. How? So if you're still using the chart, that's okay. That's why I gave it to you. The more you do it, though, the more familiar you will become with it. And then you can even graph it and look at the graph. So let's do that. Let's graph it. So I've showed you. Yeah. Yep. Degree. That's also what you use to base the type on. Leading coefficient, mm -hmm. It's the, co the coefficient that's hooked to the term with the degree. 
That's what that first term tells you so much because it gives you the degree and the leading coefficient. So you just by that you can tell the speed. You can tell the end behavior. You can tell yeah. So you need to get it. Mm-hmm. It really does. Who came up all these ideas? Who came up all those? Who discovered it? Because yeah. no, that's I mean, right. Who, but no, no, but who oh, sat yeah, down and covered all this? Stop putting me on the spot on my video channel. <laughs> just kidding. I'm always okay. I'm always history. Yeah. So I used to do a math history project where I'd give everybody a mathematician and they'd have to do like a paper and a poster on it. And actually, let me, all right, let's graph it. Y equals. I hope that video, I, I watched it, it seemed like it did a pretty good job. I hope it did a good job of walking you through how to graph it, put it in, graph it, and adjust that window. But we'll walk through it anyway. All right, negative, please remember that's the negative, it's not the minus sign. The, the subtraction, we'll do subtract, and then you'll get an error. Okay? All right, negative x to the third, and somebody's going to have to call the rest of it out to me. Plus x squared. Plus x squared. Plus 3x. Minus 3. Minus three. This should give us a beautiful cubic graph. It's nice. It's beautiful. So if I zoom six, that gives me a ten by ten window. Yeah, it does that. But look what happened. Oh no, I got it all. Oh. Okay, but let's see. Uh, let's let's just say I didn't put my reading glasses on today, and I really needed them. I want to go in some more. Okay. I want to adjust that window some, and I really want you to be comfortable enough adjusting the window that you can play around with these values and, and do so. So hit window, and you'll see that zoom 6 takes me negative 10 to 10, right? Yeah. Now, looking anytime you need to get back to the graph, hit graph. Right? It's not going to lose anything. Don't be scared to play around and, and put things in. Somebody texted me yesterday in fourth block that they were having trouble and I could not figure out what was going on with her calculator. So we just reset it all together and started over. <laughs> reset the whole calculator. All right. And she's like, yeah, it works. All right. And she texted me. I was sitting in the doctor's office. We waited on the doctor. And so I was texting while I was in there. <sighs> I do work even when I'm not here. Okay. So if I want to cut... If I want to cut some of the sides off, all right, that's my x, right? My horizontal is my x. So I'm thinking if I can kind of, where's my spray bottle? If I can kind of adjust, this thing is so slow when you switch to right over what's there. All right, if I can kind of switch over maybe here, right? So that's going to mean x max is the biggest, x min is the smallest. So if I switch over and hit window, what would that take my x min to? Min. Negative three. Negative three. This is where everybody always messes up. Your minimum has to be smaller than your maximum or you'll get an error message. It'll say no sign change. Okay. All right, x max. Like three. Okay, let's graph and see what it looks like. Okay, your max is not bigger than your min. Okay. Now, I'm going to zoom in even further. I'm going to cut some of my y's off. I got too much this way. So maybe I do the same thing with the threes. Negative three and three. And I hit graph. Now I have a nice, uh-oh, what happened? I can't hump. even see that bottom hump. I want to see all my humps. So what do I need to adjust? The y minimum. I need more down below. So when I look at the y minimum, good job. Now I have a beautiful... Cubic graph. Because those are critical points we're going to talk about tomorrow. We could, but it's 9.15. Um, um, notice as you look at this, though, what did we say the y-intercept was? 
negative three. Is it negative three? Yep. Yay, it is. You noticed on that review that I pulled up, you have an area to sketch. When I say sketch, I literally mean sketch. I am not asking for specific points like that. What I mean is whenever you see this and you get your window adjusted nicely, I would just like you to come over here and, and do this just so I know you're graphing it correctly, right? So that's a sketch. Okay. So when I say sketch on your homework, that's what I mean sketch, okay? We'll get to the point where we'll be finding exact points and this and other. This is not the time right now. Right now I want to make sure my concern tonight is that one, you can do the analysis we just talked about with the in behavior, okay? So you can do all of these and you can get a nice pretty graph when you graph it on your calculator, okay? All right, so your, your directions on your homework are going to... One more piece of analysis that I need to show you that you should already know before we go. Um, yes. Oh, well, no. You know what? Let's do that when we do the critical points tomorrow. Never mind.